We are soap-tastic today, starting with the man who's lied, cheated, committed fraud, slept with his wife's twin sister, and still had time to record this pop classic. Gonna make a feel good. Gonna make a feel good. Gonna make a feel good. When you somebody to love. Oh, that brings back a few memories, doesn't it? I wonder what his Ramsey Street friends thought of that. Good morning. Good morning, Stefan Dennis. Good morning, how are you? How lovely to see you. It's good to be. How long be. ago was that, was that um, single? Uh, 88 I did that one, end of 88, yeah. Is it really? And it's funny that you say it's a classic because it now has become that. It's been, it's been through the ringer and bag. Yeah. It's actually more popular now than it was back then. <laughs> I'm actually doing it live again, believe it or not. Right, because you're still singing, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, are I've just started doing it. And... Sorry? You're with a band? Yeah, yeah. Every once a week we do this uh, rock gig and that's the, the song we go out on. Very good. Oh, <laughs> nice to see you here today. Yeah, talk to you in a minute. Team guest Stefan, we're doing one of Australia's most famous puddings, Peach Melba. All will be revealed later. Mm. Very yeah, good. Because there's a nice history to Peach Melba. There is, and we'll go through it later. Okay. Mm. Philip Looking knows forward to yeah. Phil's peaches, Stefan. Looking forward to Phil's. Are you, <laughs> <laughs> Are you looking forward Not to enough. Phil's peaches? Yeah, and it sounded like something else from there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh, there you are. That's <laughs> rock and roll. <laughs> Proof that neighbours really can become good friends and perhaps a little bit more in our next guest's case. How many Erinsborough loveries have, loveries have you seduced? I, I think it's more a question of who Paul hasn't been with rather than who he has been with. OK, how many people hasn't he managed to seduce? <laughs> well, Susan Kennedy's one, but you know, she'll be there. Um, and uh, Kylie. Yeah, but then it's, it's a bit difficult because Ky I'm probably the only man in the world that doesn't have the hots for Kylie. Because <gasps> she played my, well, she played my kid sister. Yeah. Sister-in-law. Oh, yeah. well, yeah. yeah, fair enough. No, we can understand that. Yeah. Okay. okay, okay. At least that's a shred of decency. Yeah. <laughs> He's the man who put the ram into Ramsey Street. He is the very naughty but nice Mr. Stefan Dennis. Hi. I believe the best man lives here. My <laughs> dad. Great party. Everybody needs good neighbours. Just a friendly wave each morning. Speak of the devil. Eggs and bacon? No, thanks. There's a guy over there, my best mate, and the bridesmaid comes home and tells me she doesn't know why the wedding's off. Need to get to know each other. I'm afraid this is goodbye, Granny. It's only a footstep away. Oh, you want to see dancing? Yeah, yeah, hey, hey, hey. Uh -huh. Watch this, Gilly. I still have feelings for you. I always have. Oh, my. Oh. Do you know, I, I were just saying that I introduced the first ever episode of Neighbours on BBC One. That doesn't surprise me, because I remember, as we said earlier on, I was on Going Live back yeah. in 80... 85? 5, 84, I think it was, yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Still getting away with it, aren't we? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yours was an accident. I mean, getting into to, to Neighbours, really, I mean, you, 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 you went for, uh, went for the, a different part. Well, I was, I was actually out for a film and a play, which uh, I wanted the film first. Thought that was mine. Play... That was my second choice. And Neighbours, of course, you know, back in those days when we were theatre films and you, know, you don't do soaps, of course, you, you realise, you find out what's, uh, what's real. Um, and, and so I had no intentions at all to, uh, to get this show called Neighbours. I thought, I'm a corny thing. And I rocked up to the audition in, uh, in my, my uh, riding pants and my, uh, what do you call it, Walkman in those days, and my bicycle <laughs> and fronted up with Jan Russell. She said, come on in, come on. And I've, I read for the part of, I think the first one I read was uh, Shane Ramsey. And then I went back for the second uh, interview and, and read for uh, Paul Keane's character, Des Clark. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they said I had it, I thought, oh, great, I'm playing Des Clark. And then I got my first script and it was Paul Robinson. I'm like, mm. who's this? I had no idea who Paul Robinson was. And I suppose when you sign up, first of all, you think, well, this is sort of six months. That's what I said to my agent. I said, oh, I really don't. I want the film. How's the film going? She said, well, it's not in the bag yet. So, you know, I think you should take the, the bird in the hand. And I went, oh, all right, I'll do it exactly as you said for six months and then we'll see how it goes. 
was it now? Nearly 25 years yeah. old. <laughs> what was the Oops. film, by the way, in the end? Do you know the irony was it yeah. was The Light Horse, which was one of the biggest box office flops of Australian yeah. tele um, movie history. Well, Throne clear. God carries yeah. you from one yeah. disaster to another. That's yeah. very, very good. And so you end up, of course, with Jason Donovan as your brother. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Jim Dale as your father. Jim, Jim Dale. Dale. Alan Dale. Alan Dale. Jim yeah. Dale's another actor yeah. altogether. Um, Alan Dale is your father. And, uh, and Kylie Minogue is your sister-in-law. And you, I mean, you were quite a nice chap. Yeah. But as the time wore on, you got, as happens in Soapland, more nasty, and more evil nasty. and grim. And when I came back to the show in 2004, because I had an absence of 12 years when I was yeah. actually living over here, and I went back to the show in 2004, uh, and he was just the epitome of evil, I think, at that oh. stage. Well, he burnt down Lassiter's. He burnt down Lassiter's. He's the only person that I know of in, in Australian uh, television history who's, who's literally got away with grand arson and murder. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yes. To this day. Yes. Did the brain tumour help to change that, your that character? That corrected everything. <laughs> yes, it corrected yeah, everything. I love it. It's, it's so plain because, uh, well, what happened was literally the, the producer suddenly went, character is getting a little bit too big for the show and it's 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 getting silly even though it's terribly entertaining from one for me to play and two for the audience to watch and they loved it it, it was starting to get a bit ridiculous mm. and they said how are we going and, and initially it was like gonna have to let you go Steph and I was like oh, okay fine you know, it's been a nice run and uh, and then about three days later they said come up with a great idea and and that's what they did they, the, this brain tumor which apparently had been cooking for about 20 years oh well that yeah. was and that, that was, was where all the evil came where from. it was brewing from yeah.